Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. And today I've got one of my favorite bands and the front man from Canterbury Do Metal Quintet. It's always a quintet. Famine. Uh, he released one of the great albums last year called To The Ground Below, which we're going to be discussing in this interview. Uh, but first of all, Tom Vane, the singer, thank you for joining us on the channel. How are yeah. you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, uh, just had something to eat and I'm raring to go. Excellent. Well, I'm actually going to start. The first two questions are just about recent shows that you've played. So I believe, was it uh, this fri last Friday, the 3rd? Did you get a last-minute call to go and support Evil? The, the pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Tight under Milton Keynes? Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, it's not me that deals with the booking. So I couldn't tell you, like, the circumstances behind why that happened. Uh, but I just know that they needed a band and they contacted us and we said we were free. And so we did it. Yeah, it just happened very last minute indeed. That's a vote of confidence though, isn't it? Because their, their latest album on the other publication that I write for, Scream Last Repeat, we gave The Unknown album of the week and did a video review of it. Um, so yeah, they, that's a real return to form. How good is that though, that they went to you and said, okay, someone's pulled out. Can you go and ask this band in Kent yeah. The show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, Lord knows what possessed them, but, um, but you know, it, we're, we're happy for it. We're not going to turn that down if we can all make it. And we just, just so happened that we could. So, uh, yeah, just went for it. What's the, how, how long is that journey from Canterbury to Buckinghamshire? I think it, uh, between two and three hours. So somewhere in between there. When did you find out about the show then? Um, I think it was the night before. The, yeah, that's, that is, was it Friday night the show was? Yeah, yeah. it's the Thursday night that we found out about it. Um, maybe midday Thursday, and we had to wait till everyone could confirm that they were free. You know, it's like when when all the members have jobs and stuff, um, you can't just straight away say yes. Um, you have to just double check. You know, it's the way things are, at least for us. Yeah, and there's five of you. Do you know on the, yeah. the tour, so you played the Crawford Arms in Milton Keynes. I've still not been to this venue. That's had some real good names headlining there. Yeah, I saw did, loads of posters. In the did wall. you play there on the 2022 tour? Because I saw you in Stevenage. Did you have that on your tour last uh, year? No, that, that was the first time we played there, actually. Yeah, because I think that's where they hold the metal to the masses for Buckinghamshire. Okay. So that nice. so it's on my radar, and I've, I've seen some good bands, you know, that have been. Yeah. Metal to the masses is, is is like one of the best things this country's got going for it in terms of metal and like recognition of uh, bands across the country. So uh, that'd be a hell of a place to hold it. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. Before I go on to the next one, I should let our viewers know that famine. You actually that's where you made your name at first, wasn't it? You won the 2016 Kent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's back when I had long hair. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a picture of that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so when that, if I go on your Facebook page, is that is that going to show some old photos? I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. I wouldn't recommend. That. <laughs> so what's going on this Friday then? So you're headlining in Hackney, aren't you? Yes. There's yes, four yes. other bands. So that's Friday the tenth this week. Yeah. And the yep. venue I've got it here, the Old Street Brewery and Tap Room. In That's right, yeah. Hackney, Who's this uh, entity, the London Doom Collective? Who are they? And what, what, um, I've never heard of them. Yeah, the Who London Doom Collective. Them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a bunch of these guys that are in some different bands in, in London. Um, and by the way, you've got to understand that of all the people to ask about bands, contacts, etc., I am the last person you wanted to speak to. So I, so I, hope, that anyone, <laughs> I hope that anyone watching or listening to this isn't going to be like, Ah, oh, bastard! Forgot my name. Oh, excuse me, I just swore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but um, I should say that getting back on the track, uh, the London Doom Collective are kind of like these guys that are in different bands in in the Doom scene in London, and obviously they're very passionate about Doom. They know loads of Doom bands across the country, and they put on some of like the best like Doom gigs in London by bringing all the you know nations bands together. Sometimes bands from outside the country, as far as I'm aware. So um, so yeah, they're they are the people to uh, play for in London. Yeah, because they're good people a, as well, nice people. Got a good scene in London. There's such a diverse range of metal bands that come out of there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm I'm in Hertfordshire on the outskirts and Doom's probably, along with Sludge, the most popular genre here. You know, we just had that album, the 44 minute 
one song album by that band Je Vous Dan. I don't know if you've heard their. Oh album. yeah, yeah, I know, I know Je Vous Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that album. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, Bruce with the purple trousers, lovely guy. Bruce, I'm also <laughs> what a legend, the legend of the pinch on money. And we've got, got um, I think you're friends with them, aren't you? Everest Queen, they're from here as yes. well. Yes, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah, and then there was that, I reviewed an album by that London bad band Morag Tong. I'm assuming yeah. you probably played shows you're, you're like reaming off some of the names of the bands that like we played with and that like really nice guys um, and just just great music. So yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're all involved in the London Doom Collective. Like, you know, they all get gigs there. And, um, yeah, just it's a great thing they've got going on down there, up there, I should say. Up there. Oh yeah, because you're in Yeah, for us, for us, it's up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so the, this year you played, I noticed, Iceland and you played that festival in the Netherlands. What That's has right. been your favourite European show this year? Favourite European show? I well, We did like a little run um, and we played at the, I think it's the Eifenar in Leovarden. Um, that was really cool. Um, we did several shows like uh, back to back. Um, but something about that one uh, stood out. Um, it was off. I think I had just had a cold and um, I couldn't play a gig in Paris and they had to get other singers in to replace me for the night while I sold merch upstairs with a mask on. I think. And, um, and they, it was odd to see them playing, uh, like singing my songs, having been given like, a day to listen to them and they definitely did it in odd ways honestly but i say odd in a good way because it was different and it was interesting and they were each talented all three of them um we had a male a female and a male who had different styles and i, I didn't start with this gig but i think whilst describing to you what happened whilst i had a cold and what the show that came after it i think i'm going to change my mind and say it was that gig in Paris that was the most interesting one. The one you out. didn't participate in as a live performer. The one I didn't, yeah, the one I didn't participate in because it's different. You know, they say sorry to like go on and like you know talk gibberish for a bit, but I was just saying like I think it's just you you do crave you do crave difference and you crave like you know the, the different things when you're when you when you're on the road because as lovely as the people are and as interesting as the things you see are. It's things like that that do stand out as well, you know. Um, and it's never happened before and hopefully will never happen again um, because it was weird seeing different singers up there singing your songs with, with the band that you're in. It was, it, part of it was, it's like seeing your, your girlfriend with, with, with another guy. But at, at, at the same time, you're kind of proud <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean? I can't i can't explain this is it not an endorsement of cock holding <laughs> i think that's the term isn't it <laughs> no, I, I you went it. there not me you <laughs> went there no I, I do understand where you're coming from and um were these members of the road crew fans or from other bands because you said there were two females and a male vocalist oh no uh, sorry um it was a male a female and a male um, and okay. i'm just i'm just going in the order in which they sung basically. yeah yeah um, and um, they were, they all lived in Paris. Uh, they were all kind of contacted the day before we were due to play because we didn't want to let them down by saying, oh, sorry, our singer's ill, we can't play at all. We wanted to still put on a show there. Um, I mean, they made posters, they, they'd invited loads of people down. They were looking forward to it. We played there a few years beforehand in the show in, in, in Paris. And um, so we, we couldn't let them down. So. Yeah, it was, it was, they, it, all three had different styles. One was um, a growler, like growled quite, you know. Uh, the other one was kind of a more sort of electric wizardy style singer. And those are the two males. And the female um, was oh, a little bit, it's a mixture between like Alanis Morissette and, and a more like, like a more metal Alanis Morissette, I guess you could say. Um, and you, could, you should have seen them like the, the hour or two before we play they were all upstairs on their phones just like reading through the lyrics and like listening to the music and just like trying to get it in there you know um it was the excitement of that i think which made it stick in my mind yeah do you know what's impressive about that so these are what? fans of the band so did you did you know who'd booked tickets and just thought right these are the people who are coming 
Or did you go through the organizer and say, we're looking for three people tonight who want to take the microphone? Uh, the latter. Um, we uh, basically made them aware of my, uh, my incapacitation. Is that a word? Um, and uh, <laughs> and um, and then uh, they basically set to like asking among the people that they knew they knew within the Paris area uh, who were singers and who could sing the song. They sort of like divvied out like our set list to them. I think each singer had like two or three songs, um, and it was, it's like an hour long set. So um, yeah, they were able to spread it out accordingly and. Um, yeah, it happened. It went ahead, and it was it was cool. What footage do you have from that gig? I can't remember. I don't. I think there were some that were taken by fans because obviously they were on stage, and I was upstairs, like on the merch table, um, basically. So, so uh, there were some taken by fans. There were some that was uploaded onto like Instagram, like what's it called? Yeah, like when it's like a short. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. We haven't got much. We've got some pictures, maybe. That's what might be most special about it, though. Yeah. You know, rather than just yeah. have someone shooting the whole 40 minute gig. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like a. Uh, yeah, might it's... lead to the end yeah. of legend. You know, that it, this yeah. might just take on a story of its own now beyond what. Yeah, I mean. exactly. I prefer that. I've always preferred the less is more approach, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, I get that these days, you know, people seem to have to just like constantly remind everyone that they exist in order to feel that they exist without sounding too cynical. But um, I know I, I, I do like the less is more approach. Um, it, it gives people with imagination something to sort of like think up. Definitely, yeah. And we'll come on to that as well when we talk about the music. Because the next question. So I want to talk about to the ground below this album you released via Smart Records. I've got the date here, thirteenth of May, twenty twenty-two. Yeah, so I'm just, and it, I get it nine myself. out of ten. The screen back. Thanks. Yeah, no, I saw that. Thank you. What an album. Um, so what, first of all, how did the deal come about with Smart Records? Because your 2018 album was an independent yeah. release, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, th I think um, I think we. I don't know if we got in touch with them or if they got in touch with us. But basically, after a few meetings with them, um, we signed a deal to basically record our record and release our second album uh, through them. Um, and then that occurred, I think we were doing that when lockdown would allow us to do it. Do you know what I mean? Because there were several lockdowns as we were recording it. Um, so we were like, oh, step back for a bit and work on the songs themselves. It's interesting. It's almost as if it's almost as if COVID allowed us to not rush it, you know? Um, so we didn't, and we were able to make sure the songs sounded as good as they could. And, um, you know, I think they sound all right. Gave it a nine out of ten. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the bands on this roster that I've reviewed, you've got, they've got some great artists on here. So you've got that Italian well, spa, band. Spa artists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a roster! That Italian band, Messa. Oh yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I interviewed yeah. them last year. It was an email interview. I didn't do it on okay. the camera, but yeah, what an artist they are. They're like a yeah. It's like Susie and the Banshees with doom metal. And yeah. an, an oriental flavoring would <laughs> be interesting. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 I feel like in a way it's kind of like allowed, it's kind of put that sort of doom on, on the map again for people. You know, it's kind of reintroduced a very interesting um, flavor to something mm -hmm. that some people might assume is, has no innovation, but it really does. So, um, yeah, I fully agree with you. Yeah, because just looking at the others, you've got that Chicago experimental band yakuza fantastic album they put out red rot that was yeah a, okay what is that that's like blackened mathcore um <laughs> that band that joe from gojira loves netherlands which i've got to yeah. say is a stupid name for a band but <laughs> but I, have, I just bought that album from that 80s synth pop art pop english uh quartet japan last week so okay you know, okay that, yeah that's okay. another name well then yeah yeah, yeah. Way, like what a name <laughs> Uh, yeah, throw yeah, well, maybe one's a bit more, maybe one's a bit more catchy than the other, but you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Depends who you ask. Yeah, yeah, it's really good roster. Um, but Spart, I, I remember I was I was watching a, no, I was listening to um, a review of our album actually, um, and they said something along the lines of 
Famine were uh, are another spa um, signed artist, um, and even though they are not like the other bands on spa roster, they still have that spa sort of like touch to them. Because like they say, spa like has all these disparate sort of artists, and yet they all seem to have a certain quality which makes them, you know, like valid spa in material. You know? Yeah, I think there always seems to be an art school element to a lot of the artists. I don't know if you see yourselves that way. Let, let's talk about the album then. So oh, yeah, go for it. There's the, I, I said to you, didn't I, because I've met you twice before this and I yeah. m- often I'm drunk. And I think, don't I just keep saying to you, that song, A Submarine, reminds me of Jane's Addiction. I just keep saying that to you. <laughs> I'll repeat when I'm drunk. But no, there are. What, oh, what? Uh, oh, Submarine. submarine. Yeah. So what, what, are, what influences are outside of doom metal are coming into the mix? For the writing um, of the album, quite a lot, really. I would say doom metal is like the middle of the Venn diagram. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the other things range from uh, classic rock to grunge to psychedelia uh, to goth um, to um, post punk. Yeah. Um, a bit of uh, shoegaze sometimes, um, maybe a little bit of indie if I'm speaking personally as well. Um, so yeah, there's all multiple elements, but obviously you don't want it to be too much of a watered down version of all of the above, you know. So rather than spread that out, spread that out in each song, I think what we've accidentally done is have each song with little tasters of some. Do you know what I mean? Without, whilst allowing the song, the songs to remain. Uh, so I'm not explaining this very well, but <laughs> you get what I mean. It's like we have lots of different influences, uh, but we still try to make sure that the songs are not wishy-washy, full of them. You know? Yeah, you've not. You're right. You've not diluted. Certainly not diluted the guitars of the yeah. mix. Track number one, defeated. It, it, it sounded. So yeah, it heavy. sounded easier to, to it sounded easier to explain in my head than when I than when I when I set off and tried to do so. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I I understand that. So what what was the first song to come out of the writing sessions for this album? Because there's there are eight uh, of them, aren't there? I think it was defeated or the I. Ah, that's how you pronounce that. Track number seven. Yeah. I've been calling it the AI. You know, before I did. I yeah, everyone, everyone, does. <laughs> everyone does. Everyone does because that's the buzzword of the now. Yeah. And I don't blame people for doing that. But it, <laughs> it sounds it sounds a bit it sounds a bit pretentious if I explain it. Uh, it it the okay so an I spell AI is another is actually an, a, a type of sloth. Oh okay. Yeah, like you know like the, the the animal. Yeah, yeah, that clings to the tree branches. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So, um, like in our first ever EP, we had a song called "Enter the Sloth." Yes. Um, and so, and so, the I was sort of seen as sort of like the spiritual successor to "Enter the Sloth." At least from my perspective as the songwriter, I didn't tell anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, yeah, well, maybe, yeah, and it's more of a. Rob, where is the end of the sloth was very much sort of like just giving in to it. And by the end of the song, the sloth wins. The eye is more about picking it up off of you and just throwing them away and just getting rid of all the sloths that are stuck to you. Yeah. Yeah. That classic metaphor. We, we have that in the English language, don't we? The monkey on your back or monkey on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that's the... Yeah, that's imagery that we, we use quite often. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm looking at it here. So, Defeated, yeah, that makes sense for that to be the first because you're a doom metal band. Shoot, you're just going to be right, let's get the heaviest done songs done first because we can do yeah. this. This is what we love. Then we can experiment. Yeah. Um, the one that stands out for me, it's interesting. You said post punk and goth. Well, there's more than one that stands out. I love track number six once more. It reminds me of Sisters of Mercy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what what are the lyrics about that? I've got them in front of me. It always intrigues me that song. I love the way you sing it. There's like an, a real pathos to it. What what is it about this song? Once more. Oh, it's difficult. It's difficult <laughs> to say. I know I know you always get artists that always say that, and 
whatever it means to you is what it means. And do you know what I mean? It's, I, I, to be honest with you, the way that I write music, or at least the way that I write the lyrics, starts with the focus on the vocal line first, not the lyrics. The lyrics come next and they fit into the vocal line like liquid into a, a vessel, you know? Yeah. Um, so the meaning I sort of discover as I'm writing it, I don't sort of set out to, you know, say I'm going to write this song about this thing that happened in my past. Although that's a valid form of expression, that's not my personal way, you know? Uh, so it's always difficult for me to say exactly what it was because it's only once it's come together that I can truly say. And as it's been a while since we last sung it live and put it on the record, I'm not even sure I can remember what it means. Yeah. No, yeah. I get that. What would you say? What would you say? What do you think it means? Looking at it here, so yeah. we've got... I lay encircled, belied, delayed, in need, passive, blind, like many awake in the night, falling through endless divide, freed in dreams that pacify, freed of my own endless fight. It seems to be an inner struggle, an existential triumph that you're looking for. I know that that on its own could mean so many different things. It suits the music, though, because it's very individual orientated, very introspective. And that's what the yeah. song is, even though it's got actually, it's actually probably the most fastest tempo on the album isn't it yeah I, I think i think at the time i was listening to a lot of the cure i just discovered the cure yeah um specifically my favorite album by them uh the holy hour yeah um, no, 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 it's the on the album faith. the album is faith and yeah. the, the song is the holy hour and the holy hour begins with um i kneel and wait in silence yeah and um that's a brilliant song honestly and i i think I took inspiration from that um, because of the, the gothy sound of the of the song, um, and so I kind of went in that vein, and that felt right to say all those things that I was saying. And it is definitely introspective. I mean, I am introspective. I mean, I wouldn't be the vocalist slash lyricist of a doom band if I wasn't, I guess. <laughs> um, and so I put that on there because I wrote that song. I think I mentioned in there a figure called Sirene. Cy yeah, S I R E N E. I think that's yeah. Meant, yeah, that's right. It's meant to be like a siren, but with an E on the end because it's the name of this specific siren. Um, again, more backstory that I haven't explained to anyone. Um, and I guess that kind of is, is seen as the salvation of the of the protagonist in the in the song. You know, whatever that might be. For some people, it's dreams. Uh, some people, it's. Uh, medication worse you know what i mean an individual mm -hmm. their pet do you know what i mean it depends on the individual so uh yeah that's what siren represents there it has a certain broad appeal i guess um and that's why i find it difficult to fully explain it yeah i'm pleased you said the cure and influence they are my all-time favorite band i'm just looking nice. at every album on my shelf next to me <laughs> nice nice what's your favorite album uh, the the one after Faith, 1982 album, Pornographer, which probably is the most miserable album ever written, but it's so, <laughs> it, it really is a dark place, that isn't it, that album. Um, at, least, at, least you, at least you went for one of the early the early goth ones, they're, they're the best ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, do, I do like that 1987 album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, I think that's a classic. Okay. Yeah, when he uh, went in a bit more of a pop direction, but yeah, what a band. Um, so... Which song do you think on this album is the furthest away from your doom metal origins? I think it's the one you mentioned. Um, once more, uh, when we when we first tried to play that live, um, we, maybe it was just a vibe that I was getting. Uh, but I, I always felt as though the audience were like, "This this isn't that." <laughs> do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. And and like we and the rest of us sort of felt the same, and we were like let's not do it live anymore. But if people request enough, we can always do it in the future. But like until then, we'll not do it anymore because I guess it's not so easy to replicate live uh, as the other songs are. You know? Is that because it needs even more reverb than, our, than any other song on the album? I think, I th it's, no, it's, no, it's more, it's more the fact that it's, there's a certain vibe to it that, 
just feels a bit too upbeat for the for the tone that you have up to that point and afterwards created at the live gig um so you know you, you've got songs like you know all these dark songs that we're, we're coming up with some not so dark some more powerful than others and then that comes along and it's been like hey guys let's have a good time that's how it i'm not saying that's how the lyrics are but that's how it feels you know so um even though it's meant to have a certain dark to it i think that just sometimes gets lost in translation when the audience are there and they're there to have a good time with like heavy rock and metal you know so i'm not saying it's their fault i'm not saying you know it's a sport for the song i'm just saying it's it's more a relation to the set list itself which is something you always have to consider when you're coming up with a set list you know like you have to consider will this song be appropriate given the audience you know that's another thing to take into account like our set that we had at evil the other day was different to the set that we had at the Crawford Arms mm-hmm. and not, not at the Crawford Arms I mean, club 85 in, in, in club 85 because we knew the audience were different and I know and we knew the bands we were supporting were different so whilst we don't completely sell out we definitely change up some of the songs to better cater for our target audience yeah I think you got to that the, the two times I've seen you I want to ask about so track number eight on the album the closing track for yeah. my sins you you actually close with this in your live set when I've seen you yeah yeah that I've been looking in thinking of all the <clears> gigs <throat> I've been to all the bands I've never been to a gig where the band promoting the current album play the closing track as the finale on the show why do you think that's become so popular this song to close out the set for my sins uh i think because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a famine buffet really you know it's it's got like different bits of a lot of our songs it's got a bit fast to it it's got a bit slow to it it's got a bit of a uh haunting this to it it's uh it sort of gives a direct it sort of gives an idea of the direction that we're heading in as well um it's basically the very latest song i guess that we would have released well we, we released it first for the album what i'm saying is of all of our releases it is the last one because it's the last track do you get what i'm saying yeah from the album so i guess it's a it's the best example of who we are as a band um so far you like this one though don't you, you know with that bass line you start doing impressions and you really go for it it's just you you, you have fun on this song don't you the two yeah. times i've seen it it's almost like yeah. you're bulking <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah I, I, i've had it i've had it um explained by some no i've had it someone said to me that it was like a dad dancing or something i, I mean <laughs> i don't know i feel like i should be insulted no, I think um, I think you're aware of that because you deliberately like have got straight arms, haven't you? Like, I, it's, yeah, well, yeah, it depends. It depends. I, I, well, let's not forget when you saw me recently. It was a, at a Halloween gig, so I was definitely hamming it up a little bit. Uh, but um, otherwise, it's maybe because I've had uh, a drink, or <laughs> or because I'm just trying. I don't know. I, I like. I feel like by the end of the set, by the end of the set, you've got a certain. At least what we try in our gigs is to sort of build up a certain rapport with the audience a connection with them you know so i feel like by that point if you're not able to be yourself and sort of like joke around a little bit then then you know what's the point yeah, yeah. no i think it, I, it ends the set well that song i, I <laughs> sounded a bit defensive then apologies i'm just, I'm just yeah. <laughs> did you um so i know you said you changed the set for the eval gig did you still end yeah. with this song well oh yeah yeah, yeah so this is it's become a staple now isn't it to expect yeah, yeah it won't it won't always be that way it won't, it's not like you know oh oh faithful i mean um when we have another one that will you know achieve whatever it is we're aiming to achieve you know going forward then we'll change it you know there's no, there's no hard and fast rule that that's how it has to be but that's how it's been for a bit just watch this space and see what changes i guess yeah when i when I saw you three, was it two weeks ago? It was only Halloween, yeah, two weeks ago. I just assumed you'd be starting with Defeated or Solid Earth. And did, what song did you start with? Was that from your debut EP? What one was this? Do you know that Club 85 Halloween show? I didn't recognize I think, the opening Yeah, song. yeah, I think that was Enter the Sloth. Oh, okay. The famous yeah. Enter the Sloth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what about 
I always like to ask this question. So you formed in 2015. 14. You, was it, oh, yeah, sorry, 14. And you put out a self-titled EP. So what lessons yeah. have you learned from where you were in 2015 to where you are now? What lessons have you learned about being in a band, being in the music industry? What advice um, would you give to yourself? Is that question, you know, that ridiculous question. Looking yeah, back. yeah. Oh, that's a hard question, Um Don't do it if you're not like really, really into music. Um, I mean, do it by all means if you want to have a bit, of, have a bit of a laugh. But that getting into a, a band that you really want to do well, that you really want, that really, really feels, <clears throat> that really feels that passion inside you. Getting into that um, means that you have to let other things go that most people wouldn't want to let go, uh, wouldn't want to do. But a lot of the standard life things um, aren't so easy to do when you're in a band. Um, and I think the older you get, uh, the more those standard life things, at least speaking personally, become more and more important. Um, but I'm just speaking for myself. I would say that everyone has to try to do the thing that they're most passionate about in their life. Otherwise, there'll always be that what if, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm all I'm saying is, I'm glad that I've tried it and there isn't that what if, that I'm still involved in the thing that I'm passionate about and that we can still make music and be happy and write songs and have an outlet, have an artistic outlet, because so many people need an artistic outlet, but they don't know where to go. They don't know who to speak to. They, they're afraid of going out by themselves. It's having that, having that like, you know, network around you is so important uh, this has turned more into a rant about how much i enjoy writing music <laughs> but i guess if i was to tell someone yeah by all means have an outlet for your for your for your, for your passions but be sure you want to do it because it's not to be taken lightly yeah i can understand i mean look at all the even during covid you were recording an album Okay, give you a bit of extra time to refine some of the songs. As soon as lockdown was lifted, you did a, a an English tour. You've done you. I know you played your first gig in Glasgow, didn't you, as well recently? Yeah. So you've got the band. I can tell, as a working collective, you're all into this, aren't you? This is the outlet, but it also defines you as well, doesn't it? Because this is your art. This is your original yeah. art. So, yeah. is that? <clears throat> do you think that's going to be the problem in the future? You're having to continue to do these these tours. The no, I don't think so. Does that not does that not put you off? Um, no, not really. Because I think if you try to keep the band exactly as it was in say any of the years in which we've been around, then it will it would just ossify and it wouldn't and, and it, it would just it would just people would lose interest anyway. I think you need to be a uh, 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 a constantly evolving uh, live and by live I mean in the in the in the living sense animal you know um, because and by and what I mean is in order to do that you need to you need to go with what you're feeling all five of you or four or three in another band or six or whatever uh, and that means ad adapting as you go you know with every person's personal life you know, um, so we don't, we're not being held in place by anyone or anything. We're doing it because we want to do it, not because we feel like we have to. You understand? It's, it's, it's about us as individuals, because without us as individuals, the band wouldn't, wouldn't exist. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Where does the Iceland show figure, you know, on your list of achievements as a band? Oh, it's up there. It's up there. Trust me, it's up there. When I when I like found out that we could do it, and um, we were presented with like a date, and I think one person couldn't do it, and then there was another date that was presented, and another person couldn't do it. I was like, I was like, oh, can, can you just try and get it off, please? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, managed to get it off and uh, managed to do it. 
you made the most of it, didn't you? Like within hours, you're like, take me to some geysers. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, do you know what? In in, in typical, um, I guess you could say Nordic understatement, or uh, you know, like uh, what do they call it in in Sweden? Uh, Higa. Uh, what it what it is? It, it's, it's another word. It's like just enough. It's like not too much, just enough. It was like, uh, so do you want to uh, do you want to go and see see a volcano? It, it, it only recently uh, we were like hell yeah <laughs> so uh he took us there we sort of like you know verged off the main road and we're traveling down like towards this volcano for ages and uh it just started spitting I was like, oh. but we got out and we didn't care how how wet we got we just had to head towards as close as we were legally allowed to get to the edge of this smoking uh barely dormant volcano See that how how much does that help you cultivate the friendships within the band when you get this experience, which I assume is a first for everybody, go into Iceland. Hmm. The, what how does it help cultivate? Yeah, does how helpful is it to cultivate the relations in the band to think? Do you know, what, I want to do this again next year. Yeah. Um, uh, do you mean like interband or intraband? Like uh, interband amongst yourselves. Do. You, do you, okay, what I'm asking is, do you get that shared sense of euphoria, all five of you, on this trip to Iceland, beyond just going there for a gig? Yeah, almost definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, if you think about it, like, in a way, these these tours, these these times away, we have to individually, each, if possible, book time off work to do them. So they kind of serve almost as our holiday as well, you know? And even though, let's say five out of this, on an average, five out of seven days a week would be us going, doing gigs and not really having much time to explore. It's those few days or the few hours that you get to sort of get to know the promoter, get to know their friends, get to know the, the location, the surrounding nearby, hoping they can speak English so that we can talk to them a bit. Um, and they can show us around. All those things really are what make the experience of going abroad, or even going around the UK, really, you know, like worth it. You know, like it's all part of it's all part of it. If you if you got rid of that, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Have you played mm -hmm. Finland then? Because Smart Records is a Finnish label, isn't it? Uh, it is. Uh, but no, we've not played played Finland yet. Um, we'd like to. We'd like to do. Um, you know, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Um, it's easier said than done, though. Uh, but yeah, that that would be that would be. I would say that um, say what you like about it. Um, Brexit has definitely made it a little bit more difficult for bands. A little bit be a bit of an understatement, I'm afraid, to go abroad and play abroad. Um, bands from the UK. But then <clears throat> the flip side of that might hopefully be that there'll be more of a focus. Excuse me. There's a plane going over <laughs> but i was gonna say the flip side of that might hopefully be perhaps more of a readjustment to um you know touring around the uk and perhaps a rejuvenation of, of that scene yeah yeah mm. so um before we before we end the interview i just want to ask i know you, you you've started writing the third album how's that shaping up what can we what can yeah, we it's going okay um you can expect an evolution in terms of sound. It's still going to be, again, the center of the Venn diagram, the doomness. Yeah. Um, but of course, uh, you know, things change and uh, individuals change, our tastes, who we are as people. So I'm sorry to be so very vague, but expect a different album than the last one. Yeah, I mean, there's, you can't say too much because it's still in progress, isn't it? I, I, yeah, I yeah. That. When we say in yeah, progress, yeah. are you are you doing pre-production at the moment? Or are you actually recording? Um, oh no, no, we're still coming up with songs. We we've, we've got like we've got like several that are all like if you imagine like a, a robot that's like broken up into pieces on a table. That's what each song kind of looks like. Some without a head, some without legs, some without arms, some without the body. But that's what each song is at the moment. Yeah. When do you think it'll be ready for public consumption? 
Um, I'm torn between lying to you and acting all positive and <laughs> telling you the truth and being all negative, but it's my truth and I'm a, I can sometimes be a bit of a negative person. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I think I should only just, I should only just say to you, hopefully next year, uh, I can't guarantee. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, is this final we'll try? Yeah. Is there still, there still seems to be life in to the ground below though, doesn't there? You know, to, to still continue to promote that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, we get, you know, new fans come along, you know, every now and then, um, you know, we'll get a gig off the back of it or we'll get a message chucked to us. Um, uh, I was, I was out in Canterbury about a few months ago. Someone said to me, are you, are you Tom B? I was like, yeah. And they're, um, they're like, sing and refer me. I was like, yeah, that's right. They're like, I love a Submarine. Uh, it's, that's a lovely song. I was like, oh, thank you. You know, it's, I love it when people like do that. Um, so every now and then you're surprised. Um, and at the same time, you're a little bit like, huh. Oh, I was recognised in the street. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Although that's only ever happened in Canterbury. I don't expect that anywhere else. <laughs> you know. You were quick to say yes when he when this chap says to you, are you Tom Ben? <laughs> well, I asked like, my yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was only my recounting of it. I wasn't, right. uh, I wasn't, you know, yeah. You were terrified really, weren't you? <laughs> I, I think, um, I think it's just a bit nervous if I'm honest with you. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really, um, I find, I find uh, having the focus on you, um, whereas when I was younger, I, I kind of wanted it. Uh, I find that's not so much the case nowadays, because I guess it's less of a thing I'm after. I'm more after the music than I am the, the recognition and the, and the, although it's lovely, and I love it when people, you know, compliment the music. Um, it's it's not that that's not what I'm doing it for. Do you know what, do you know what I mean? I'm very grateful though. I'll say that. Yeah, and it's great as a as a fan to know that there's another album coming. So I'm going to end the interview here. But I always like to urge our viewers try and find the time. Go go and listen to this album. So it's the sophomore effort from fans called to the ground below released on smart records last year and you're right that venn diagram is probably a good description of it it's doom metal but there are no cliches on here it's not heavy blues it they don't you know there are no songs about getting stoned on here i'm not saying that's a bad thing but that is one of the cliches <laughs> synonymous with with doom metal there's none of that on here and like you said that chat recognized the song a submarine i do and i think that is the one that probably is the furthest away in that Venn diagram on the on the periphery. Uh, and I'd happily take more songs like that, but as long as the core remains colossal, epic, doom metal, it will. Then, you, you can't go wrong. So yeah, thanks for joining us on the channel, on the channel, on the channel. <laughs> uh, absolute pleasure. And um, I've no doubt I'll be seeing you live again soon. Yeah, hopefully. But um, thank you for uh, speaking to me. I'm um, sorry, not more of the band members could make it. Just busy guys. Um, and yeah, um, to everyone that likes us and has supported us, if you're watching this, listening to this, uh, big thank you to you. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be what we are. So uh, yeah, and thank you, Kurt, for uh, having me on.